Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is George, and today I would like to bring to you a video regarding my week in review. So, I was thinking of what kind of video I should make for this week. I already made one that is scheduled to appear um, tomorrow morning uh, around 8 a.m. I, I don't know really how YouTube really works, in all the ins and outs, but uh, I'd like to schedule one video uh, a week, and especially uh, Saturday mornings. That's uh, when I used to have fun as a kid, especially in the summer when there wasn't um, when there wasn't school. Because during the regular weekday, during school time, I would go to Greek school in the mornings on Saturday. So uh, us Greek folks, we would miss uh, the morning cartoons and go to. Greek school to learn Greek and history and geography and a lot of other stuff that uh, I wasn't being taught in public school. And then in turn we would miss our uh, our Saturday morning cartoons until summer came, uh, summertime came. And it's also a way of me being able to provide you uh, with regular content. Uh, so scheduling one video a week every Saturday and um, it uh, <laughs> It's challenging just the same because I have a busy day ahead of me. I took Friday off, but uh, the goal for me today is really uh, not to produce a video, but to make sure that uh, uh, my boys have everything they need for school because the school year is about to start, starting the 31st of, uh, of August, and there's going to be a lot of challenges ahead of us for the remainder of the year. So with no further ado, my week in review, where I'm going to pay a little bit of tribute to my um, weekday opponents. So let's start with Monday. Monday I am playing the the powerful Dino Limosani. And what we're playing, and this is the second time we're playing it, is J214 Raph's orders, and uh, it's his turn to take the Americans. And Dino is pretty interesting here. What he at attempted to do is to really, um, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's exploiting the mistakes that I did <laughs> as the German player. <laughs> Not at all, but uh, he, uh, uh, he made a, a valiant attempt to establish the earliest victory conditions of the, of the scenario, which is to take a one flank and six buildings in the victory zone up on the north end of the uh, uh, of the board. Uh, when I was playing the uh, the Americans, my biggest nemesis I found was the marshes and the stream, which causes you to uh, become CX when you go in there. And uh, he made some headway. Uh, unfortunately, we both didn't have any luck with the American mortars up here, up in the north. Um, and in this case, we, he, he did use smoke and I did <laughs> roll a win, a win roll, uh, as rare as that might be. And um, we're on the American turn three. So it looks like uh, it's going to be a battle of the Alamo again. Um, and, it, and it's still up in the air. So with that said, uh, let's go on to Tuesday. So, uh, for Tuesday, we're looking at uh, playing our opponent, the venerable and omnipotent uh, Alain Chabot, uh, the rulebook editor guru, and at one point, the playtester. Let's take a, a bit of coffee here. It's Friday morning at 8.18 a.m. <laughs> I usually wake up at 5. <laughs> 
Oh boy. Ah, nice and warm. Great. So let's take a look at the map board, get in a, in a closer look. Uh, so we're going bounding fire productions into the factory. And you know, Alan likes to scramble all the counters across the board, throw them here and there, left and right, including the casualties. <laughs> let's put that in the Allied casualty bin. Um, so let, let's go take a deep dive into this scenario. So it's uh, Kharkiv, Ukraine, 16th of March, 1943. That's probably the date we actually started it. No, 16th of March, that is. No, no, no. It, we started a little bit recently. So I'm playing the SS and uh, Alliance playing the, the, the Russians. Um, he created most of the SSF this time around. Um, I, I find it challenging to put all these um, overlays on the board and uh, there is there is rubble gal galore that's why they call it package into the rubble so uh, I managed to uh, eradicate the Russians in one factory and he posted a uh, he did post a question about all right where are the rooftop access points in these uh, in these um, on this map and he did get a question uh, he did get an answer. He did. He did get an answer. And it appears that um, there is only one factory without a uh, rooftop access somewhere around here. Um, so I completely smashed his uh, his infantry gun with um, my flamethrower. Uh, this guy is going to be proved to be a very hard cookie to to uh, get rid of. Um, Provided I have a turret hit, I should be okay. Yeah, he has a 76L there. That's going to be very tough. Uh, we're still in melee. This uh, fellow got uh, um, immobilized with a uh, Loney T26. This guy's on the prowl here for more Russians to DM and make sure they run away. This stack is the result of trying to run away from this juggernaut here. I'm going to have to, uh, once I get rid of this tank, uh, I think that uh, we'll have a good shot at, uh, at these folks here. Um, and the question is now, it's uh, a German turn three, and uh, he'll it'll be his, coming Tuesday, it'll be his Russian turn three. And the question is, will he uh, continue to to, um, to skulk, or will we engage in some fist fighting? <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. Oh God, this guy is, was pinned in the middle of the street. Oh, what can you do? I don't think he's even supposed to be concealed at this juncture. Anyway, so that was Tuesday night, and basically here what I'm using what I'm trying to do is, what I'm trying to do is, uh, I had three assault engineers, three squads of assault engineers, and so far the strategy is has proven to be quite successful. And basically, what we're doing is um, using the assault engineers and smoke to propel the OB forward. But uh, as you can see here, I've had some setbacks already. Um, and everybody has turned to an Alamo defense, consolidating <laughs> in the victory location. So we'll see what we can smash and what we can break. It'll all depend on roles uh, at this point. It's a really head-to-head -head scenario. So with that said, let's go to Wednesday, because I already forgot what I did Wednesday. Hold on one sec. So Wednesday, I am playing with Ken Rodkowski, the Polish stallion, the gentleman, and scholar. Uh, and uh, he's a very wise fellow. Now what's happening here is I'm playing the Russians, and um, and um, Ken has obliterated the left flank here. So I'm expecting that these forces here are going to do a 
a nice right hook and try to gain the, the victory objective, um, which is this building or these two buildings at game end. Unfortunately, his uh, assault engineers and the squads here um, put up a good fight, but they have been propelled by a few uh, lone units that, um, in order for him to advance and take this line of, of, of buildings, um, he had to come up point blank and a couple of lucky rolls um, really um, set him back much like what happened to me on my first game yeah which reminds me on my Monday night um, my Monday night uh, game uh, you might not see all the OB on the board because the way we play it is my opponent prefers to stay with a, a board and paper uh, set up well we just use the the um, the um, what do you call this thing vassal we use vassal as the dice roller and um, I, I play with vassal uh, and uh, avoid setting up with cardboard because let's face it if I have five opponents and I'm playing uniquely with cardboard I would need five different locations or maybe duplicates of the maps to play that's what I'm playing now so Vassal is is, um, is very convenient but I do own uh, on paper and from purchasing from MMP or other suppliers the scenarios that um, or the units and the map boards that I I am playing virtually mm -hmm. oh well so that's Wednesday night and uh, it's still a toss-up as to who's going to win who's going to lose um, at the end of the day I think uh, the important thing is one having fun two being being very sport having good sportsmanship because this is a sport I mean it does take a, a lot of physical strength and, and brain power to play and if you can call playing poker a sport, this is a sport. What can you do? I wish it was more athletic. Like uh, for every KIA you incurred, you would have to do a, a 10 jumping jacks, for example. That's something to think about. <laughs> All right. Hang in there. I'll show you what's going on Thursday nights. So Thursday nights, it's breakout from Borisov. It's a classic um, scenario from uh, COI. Yeah, that was a good uh, sip of coffee. And uh, uh, basically what's going on is I'm playing as a Soviet player. And I, I, I did uh, agree to play as a German later on. Let's uh, zoom out if we can, see what's going on. So the Germans come in at uh, half movement factors, half movement points. Uh, they made some in, in, uh, inroads on board three. Uh, the Russian players had uh, cavalry and quite a few tanks, but uh, uh, the German players beginning to give a, a bloody nose to the uh, Russians. Uh, we had two weapon malfunctions. Where's the... Hold on, this isn't the latest. Let, let's uh, get the latest. Yep, here's the latest. So there's the two weapon malfunctions here and there. And if you have noticed, um, what's going on is uh, there are units being brought up uh, on this board because basically the way you win this game is the Russians win at game end by controlling more boards than the Germans. And control of a board is accomplished by having twice a uh, minimum of one as many VPs on the board than the enemy, including hexes shared by a greater than or equal to two boards. VPs are counted as good order exit VP. Excluding prisoners are not applicable. So um, with that said, uh, 
what you've got here is um, basically uh, a scenario where uh, you got to control an entire area uh, of hexes um, based on VPs. It's not taking prisoners. It's not casualty victory points. It's not uh, a specific uh, location. It's an entire map board area. So, and having um, more VP than the other guy on the map board. Stuka dive bombers will be coming in during my movement phase. And um, it's going to be a bit hairy with the Stukas. And uh, like I said before, the, the German player has begun taking, uh, giving a bloody nose to the Russian player. That's me. And um, it looks like they control board three. I still control board four, board five, and board two is still up in the air. Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, that's what's going on. Um, and the big joker, let's focus in on the boat, uh, big joker, is this fellow here. Here he is, up in W5, board uh, two, and he took out one tank right there with his heavy. And as you can see, these are early war tanks with uh, very little armor factors. So with a minus three DRM, it's an easy hit with this HMG to the um, to the uh, uh, armored fighting vehicle. And then if you roll low enough, that vehicle is pretty much fried. Um, so we exchanged the casualties there on a two for one basis. Um, yeah, and uh, I believe what took this guy out was a lucky shot from the ATR here. Um, and right now this position has become untenable due, due to wilts. You have to knock him out, see what we can do to knock him out. Hmm. This fellow here is looking that direction. Oh well, we'll see what happens. I think we still have a, a good chance of uh, doing something really uh, meaningful in terms of winning as the Russians. Uh, I'm not too sure what these Stukas are going to, uh, <laughs> how the Stukas are going to contribute to this. I still call them the Stukats, and I'm hoping that uh, they, they fail their task checks somehow <laughs> and um, <laughs> get some um, near misses and some, um, and some mistaken hits. So this was Thursday night. And tonight I am playing something. <laughs> uh, hold on, let's see what we're playing Friday night. Well, it seems that I, I'm not getting tired of uh, death at the cement plant. And um, this is another uh, outcome with uh, my... Uh, my uh, top-notch rookie opponent, we're both rookies really, because um, when it comes to the rule book, we just recently started to master it within 12 months or so, or a year and a half, maybe longer in my case. And um, here, as you can see, the wounded leaners were victims of the Russian sniper. Yep. Russian sniper and a couple of lucky attacks by the Russians from where? From places that were not expected, unfortunately. Yeah, and this location is uh, devoid of any units and filled with support pens because here we ended up getting a 8-2 um, shot. And it's Russian turn 3. And let's take a look at the victory conditions. Non-crew MMC in building. And it says MMC. It does not state 
uh, squad equivalent. So an NFC can be a half squad. So it's still anybody's game, regardless of the casualties. All that needs to be done is uh, acquire uh, control of this building and that building. And the rear of this building is slightly guarded. So that action will unfold tonight, and we'll see where it takes us. That's more or less my week in review. Uh, what I did leave out was uh, Sunday. And Sunday, I did not play a game. Um, because my Sunday night opponent had some family commitments. Family is important, of course. But uh, Saturday afternoons, I do play starter kit. And I try, when I'm playing starter kit, I try to um, to um, play with starter kit, uh, the starter kit set of rules only. I try not to mix advanced squad leader with starter kit. Although I like the starter kit system a lot because it's simplified. And it doesn't get um, more complicated than that. You know, it's a simplified form of squad leader. There's no overruns, there's no bypass, there's no snipers. But all the essential um, elements to a, a good fight are there. You know, and in, in a way, by simplifying the rules, it, it focuses more on tactics than. Um, rule book lawyering. Speaking of rule book lawyering, um, let's turn to our channel and talk about a couple of things. So, um, a viewer by the name of Guido Guerra 9855 said, Thanks for your video. Are you sure that street fighting modifier doesn't apply to vehicular bypass movement too? Maybe yes. And I retracted my initial re response and ultimately what I said is I stand corrected the last sentence of 11.8 alpha 11.8 applies street fighting to vehicles also in stationary bypass or using vehicular bypass movement from infantry in the bypass obstacle of their hex so when you look at street fighting a 11.8 street fighting any vehicle in a road hex and adjacent in all caps to a building hex on both sides of that road is especially vulnerable to CC in that hex. Now, last sentence says any vehicle in stationary bypass or using vehicular bypass is also subject to street fighting rules from any infantry in the bypassed obstacle of their hex. Normal patsy requirements apply in all cases. So you got to think about that for a moment, because the first condition uh, of that of that uh, of that rule, or the first sentence says, it, it, you need to be the vehicle needs to be in a road hex and adjacent to a building on both sides of that road it is especially vulnerable to CC in that hex. Now. Technically, the way I interpret that is that um, there are two buildings on each side of the vehicle, and that vehicle is in a road hex, equi equidistant perhaps from one um, from one um, uh, building to the other. Um, a vehicle that's in bypass uh, would be uh, closer to one building as a uh, closer to one building versus another, and not on a road, but in open ground. Now, how are you supposed to interpret the last um, the last sentence? That any vehicle in stationary bypass or using vehicular, bypa uh, vehicular bypass movement is also subject to street fighting rules. Now, um, Really, I think that if Perry hasn't already uh, ruled on that one, he should. I'm not aware that if there is a Q and A on that one, but notice that the last sentence says it's subject to street fighting rules. Street fighting rules and the street fighting 
uh, DRM, ambush DRM, are two different things. <laughs> so technically, you could say, um, you could say that um, what that sentence says is that um, you could be in bypass and you're not bypassing a road, you're bypassing a building, but if that road passes through the hex, uh, the, as, uh, the open ground portion of the hex that the building's in, then the, it would apply, I, I'm suppose, I suppose. Um, so at this point, I'm really uncertain. And what's important to note is 11.6, 11, 11 the Patsy requirements also apply pursuant to 11.6. Now there's a footnote, uh, footnote 17 of chapter A, and let's take a look and see what that says. Only takes a sec. All right. There it is. Street fighting. An armored fighting vehicle was at a distinct disadvantage in the close quarter combat posed by the narrow city streets of Europe. The abstracted map boards of the game system do not have adequate representation of the suffocating confinement of street fighting, thereby requiring special treatment. Well, now that I've read the, the footnote, I would tend to rule that even if you're in bypass, you would be subject to to um, to this, that street fighting penalty. Ah, so much for being a rule book lawyer. Anywho, I pinned this comment, by the way, um, so uh, people can um, see my corrections, if any, uh, up front. What can you do? Also, we reached a milestone of over 700 subscribers, which much to my amazement, I never imagined I would ha ever have so many subscribers. Uh, just to give you um, a little uh, s scope and depth of uh, what that means in terms of videos, we have 316. And if we sort by the most popular, you'll see my most popular videos have nothing to do with um, Squaw Leader. In fact, I do do taxation. That's my... Uh, uh, I, I don't per se practice tax. I, I work on the quality control of this program and a couple of other programs. And turns out that uh, over four years we got mustered 8.7 thousand views there, which is really small compared to what other videos have mustered in that same period of time. But um, tax videos were pretty uh, awesome. Unboxing my GXQ 185 miniatures was pretty good, nifty too. Some person remarked that I'm chewing gum while I'm doing my my um, my video. If you were in my position, you'd be chewing gum more regularly, so don't worry about it. Uh, again, some tax, some OCS, which I haven't touched in a very long time. Um, the basic modules or the minimalist approach to um, to uh, squad leader, mustard. 1000.6, my general axioms for playing solitaire, snipers, or no, the most, the five most overlooked uh, rules. You guys like those Nickelback uh, movies. And a couple of other things about DT Toolkit and uh, crypto mining and taxation of crypto in Canada, uh, the aftermath of. Uh, one of my uh, tournament scenarios, my 3D map boards, which are up there somewhere. Yeah. And five years ago, I made a video with my youngest son, who's a cute, handsome young man now, playing football <laughs> to the best of his ability, about uh, unboxing uh, Smolensk derailed. And I'm hoping to get the uh, the Sicily uh, map board as soon as I can. And and Doom Battalions, not Armies of Oblivion, but Doom Battalions is what I'm looking to get next. And if I don't get it, I'll figure out a way to get it. <laughs> all right, uh, with that said, hey, thanks to all the new subscribers and thanks to the stalwart uh, 
people that were in this channel from the very beginning. I thank you tremendously for the support and the views. I also want to extend a, 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 a sincere thank you to Dan and Artie for promoting my channel. I know that Artie a while ago made this uh, channel the channel of the week. And uh, Dan, every Saturday morning, uh, poor fellow, uh, the titles I come up with and what he has to read on the internet. Oh, well. Anywho, I hope you enjoyed the video. We're 30 minutes in, and I'll probably have some interesting content for you next week as well. So stay tuned, stay focused, roll low, and be good. Take care.